Hello everyone, welcome to GT Time. I'm your host slash moderator, Kyle Bossman, and joining us as always is our uniquely talented and knowledgeable panel, including Brandon Jones. I'm back. Daniel Bloodworth. Hey. And Michael Damiani. Nice. Too bad you uh, ripped off Sony's press conference with that uniquely talented we bit. did. We did uniquely talented first. They listened to us. I, didn't, I, I missed that. I didn't hear that part. Yeah. Uh, the team who do the uh, Resogun, what are they called? Marquee? Housemark. Uh, Housemark. Uh, they uh, were introduced as uniquely talented uh, okay. earlier today. Uh, to explain oh, yeah. to everyone, we're in, a, we're in the midst of a crazy week. It is not only Gamescom week, but it is Game Trailers Moving Week. And it is a stressful, condensed week, and that is why you're seeing this episode early. That's why this episode will be only one camera shot. Game trailers calm week. <laughs> Kyle apparently also thought it was a good idea to not sleep last night. So Daniel Bloodworth says, Kyle, uh, you have to be in at 4.30 in the morning, which is miserable. That's like, who wants to wake up before 4.30 and get to work by 4.30? You should still do it, though. I should have done it. So what I, I, I definitely was in the camp back in the day of just like, well, that would just be three hours sleep. Screw it. But you need those three hours. It's, yeah. it's always a, a good idea to sleep. So I'm running on zero hours of sleep today. Isn't uh, that great? That burn? Isn't that but nice? I feel, like, I feel like I had a pretty good intro. I feel like I brought the energy. I, I really like the moment in Fight Club when he describes being asleep. When he's like, nothing's really near or far. Everything's just kind of on the same plane. Sure. He kind of looks out at his office and it's really hazy. Like That's one of my favorite representations of like what that feeling is like. Yeah, and I feel that, I feel like my fingers aren't there. You know what I mean? These are but just... it'll come back to you for three hours. All of a sudden, like, yeah. oh, three hours, you'll feel fantastic. And then it's you crash again. But it felt good, you know what I mean? Like honestly, I wanted to do it a little bit. Like we're saying goodbye to this office, and it's gonna it's gonna feel weird. Well, we're moving at the end of the week, and I'm out of the, out of town Friday, yeah. and I'm I'm not getting sleep Thursday night. I'm cutting GT countdown and packing and all my whole office, and it's like, okay, well I won't get sleep that night. That'll be I'll sleep on the plane. Yeah, hopefully. But are you gonna miss this <laughs> office or what? Yes, there's no time to miss anything. Yeah. Charge forward. This, these brick walls that we keep getting I'm kicked out of. I'm not gonna miss these brick walls. Yeah. <laughs> I miss our old logo. But this fancy know. studio <laughs> will be taken away from us. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely moving on up in, in studio terms, so that'll be nice. Uh, let's talk Gamescom. Uh, today, earlier this morning, uh, we saw press conferences from both Microsoft and Sony at Gamescom, and they both brought it. They both had press conferences. Yeah, and Microsoft hasn't in the past. Right. It's pretty unusual for them, but yeah, they had a pretty decent show. They went all out, yeah. Uh, very impressive. Uh, basically, I mean, still like not as grand as E3, I guess, but mm -hmm. uh, still a press conference, and I really uh, appreciated the effort from both of them. Um, let's talk about Microsoft first, because that came first chronologically. Yeah. Um, Blood, what's your, you seem like you're happy about what they did today. I mean, I'm happy that they did a press conference. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like they showed anything really surprising. Like they had that one game announcement, and it was by the Connectimals guys, and it was just Scream Ride. You know, build build roller coasters and then like send people through buildings, and you know, the more screams you get, the better you've done. Sure. Let's not move on from that. Actually, let's talk about Scream Ride. <laughs> that was so. That was the one game they announced. That was it. Was it's like it is like Roller Coaster Tycoon, I think, except for with no business aspect. It's like just build rides, and then you can destroy things. Yeah, I mean, I don't honestly know how in depth it goes. I mean, I saw the trailer, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it didn't look that great. I don't know. Just a, a peculiar, a peculiar game yeah. to debut amongst this. Just like, and now we're going to show you a new IP, and when you say we're going to show you a new IP, uh, there's sort of an expectation you're building up. And then to show up, like, here's a, a wacky roller coaster game. Uh, it's, you know, it kind of deflates what we expected, I think, a little bit. Uh, in terms of having a press conference, if you know what I mean. There was also a weird Sunset Overdrive trailer where they kind of aped Samuel L. Jackson for their character. The <laughs> Floyd narrating the thing. So are we going to nitpicks? Are we doing nitpicks first? I don't Is know. It, I mean, you, you, you The Sunset you Overdrive, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like your takeaways, blood. So... What did you think of that Sunset Overdrive? I mean, it was kind of funny. Though. I think they've mentioned this before, but, you know, like the soda. The soda is what's created all the monsters, people drinking the soda. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and, he, and this guy, Floyd, was apparently the tester in the labs, but they didn't give him enough time to do his job. He's like, oh, I would have caught that. I would have caught that thing going wrong. I would have found that. <laughs> right. And so the way this was introduced is Ted Price, uh, CEO and president of Insomniac, walks out and says... Uh, this game shows a lot of our sense of humor. 
uh, you know, and so you want him, you want it to be funny. You know what I mean? He's selling, hey, you're about to watch a funny trailer, and then it's a trailer with zero laughs, and like it feels, the VO is a little like I don't know. You said it was a knockoff of Samuel L. Jackson. I think that's like a little mean, but it wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> was it supposed to be funny? It and, was supposed to be funny and snappy and like clever, and you just didn't. It didn't exude any of that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and so that was weird. It, I don't think that that game showed well because of the VO. <laughs> right. Um, they started off with Assassin's Creed Unity trailer, which I think is probably a good trailer in itself. It's just, it was weird because it didn't feel like it built to anything. It's like they showed the trailer and then mm -hmm. they came out on stage and just started, yeah, almost as if they weren't even acknowledging the trailer that much. Yeah, it, you know, there wasn't any kind of extra gameplay demo. Gameplay demo. For the no. game or it was honestly, like it was showing a guy doing really long jumps. Uh, but the piano was great. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I thought it was. It was cool, like especially points where you see again, you see those crowds, and just like that's a lot of people. Um, by the way, for the people who are just listening, Bloodworth has six pages of notes, but I really appreciate this. <laughs> Seven. There's one little page hiding underneath there. Unless this yeah. page is relevant, I'm assuming, right? <laughs> I actually that's... stole somebody's notebook. They were just sitting there at the, the desk, and you know, like, oh. oh, I'm taking that. So. What happened to your notebook? I was in my bag still, but it was just, this is already sitting there. So okay, so that's your notebook now. I um, like that Unity trailer because it was different from the other ones. Like they've they've done a lot of like popular music and edgy, fun, actiony stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, love open world games. So I like the trailer that that was the open world trailer. I, I would consider that, you know, just kind of like setting up the scenes and showing here are these little pockets of this world, all of it's living and breathing, and all this is happening even if you're there or not. And uh, some really cool wide shots. There's a really great shot of him, like, ascending down through Notre Dame, like, you know, about to take out his, his victim, and you can only, you know, you don't really notice him right away in this wide shot. Uh, um, so it's kind of kind of neat to, like, get really far away. For something like Infamous or something, it would be smart yeah. to get, like, pull the camera back really far and see the guy running through just to show, like, look how big the city is, look how many people there are. Yeah, some of those shots are unbelievable. It's just like thousands and thousands of NPCs roaming around. Brandon, I always appreciate your trailer perspective. Well, that's one trailer. I missed them this morning, actually, but I saw that uh, You weren't um, up previously. at 5 a.m. this morning watching I was not. Day? I was sleeping, yeah. I got it. Because I'm going to have a loose sleep this weekend and next week, so I'm trying, yeah. to, trying to catch up while I can. Um, but I hate, I hate coming into this and not knowing about trailers. Game announcements, that's fine. Little news tidbits I can take. Well, let's, let's actually... People describing videos I haven't seen, I just... Before we talk about little trailers, we oh, should yeah. talk about the huge news that happened. Okay. Yeah. The huge news, to me, the one thing that made me go, whoa! Like, I was in a room alone, and I still did that. Someone's going to hate you for that. But. I backed up from the mic. Okay. I got my, I got, I'm training. I'm microphone training. Um, Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Oh, yep. Has been announced as an Xbox exclusive title for fall of 2015. Or winter 2015. Holiday. Holiday. Holiday 2015. It's one of those Final Fantasy things where it just used to used to think of. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, Lara was born on the PC. I mean, she belongs on PC more than anything. But like, you know, definitely a franchise we associate with PlayStation more. Weird to see something. I mean, it, it seems like one of those things where it was just like it was like an AOE sales pitch. Where like I'm sure they went to everybody and they were like, we want everything exclusive on Xbox. Sorry, what's AOE sales pitch? <laughs> Meaning, you know. Area of effect, so like you don't just like it's not like a targeted thing, Lighter. you know. Like you, I'll yeah. just take them all, you know, just like a big EMP blast of like, please be exclusive, and like that. That's the one that bought, you know. Square Enix said, okay, yeah. That's when they're one, like, okay, this one franchise we're willing to do an experiment here. Um, it, it, yeah, it doesn't. There's nothing about the culture uh, or the technology or any of the tools that Xbox is using that somehow connects or pertains to Tomb Raider. It's just like, all right. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, it's dartboard. Just thunk, you know, pick a franchise. Could be anything. And it was funny. They kind of like tried to say we've had a relationship with Xbox for a while. They were like, yeah, they had, they let us debut on E3 2011. You know, it's just like, oh, like you guys are buddies because of that. <laughs> well, even Sunset Overdrive, which since its inception has said we couldn't do this without the Xbox One, and like I'm still not entirely sure what that means. Yeah, right. Exactly <laughs> right. that. It seems and like you could really do anything on either console. Like again, unless you're using something like Project Morpheus or Connect or something that is exclusive technology was and I think they're things that you like basically have to say I think that like if you did get a huge check from Microsoft you can't say well we got a huge amount of money for being exclusive for the the winter season the, the holiday season of 2015 you got enough money for Square Enix to keep off our back this time and, yeah, you know, yeah exactly we actually you just, finish our game without worrying how long it's gonna take to sell enough to please them right you have to say <laughs> oh yeah we're very excited about what Microsoft brings to the table this is gonna make us the best game we can possibly make you have to say that I guess Damiani you haven't spoken yet what's your feeling on this 
I mean, I don't care how much money Microsoft gave Square Enix. This is a really... For the future of Tomb Raider, this is really bad. Okay, go on. What do you mean? Uh, but Temple of Osiris. <laughs> that's something different. But yeah, Temple <laughs> of Osiris. I, I actually got an email like immediately after like all that announcements happened. I got an email like Temple of Osiris, go pre-order it like right now. Like they're trying to it's push that. It's still coming to all consoles. It's still coming yeah, to everything. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. Really? No, um, there's just gonna be a lot of backlash. I mean, it's knee jerk right now. I don't know how much it'll like taper off and even out, but the reactions right now is a lot of people who don't have an Xbox One, those who, yes, technically it was PC franchise was born on, but a lot of people do associate it with PlayStation. People bought a PlayStation 4, like, oh, don't worry, I'm gonna get like Tomb Raider, this new Tomb Raider is gonna be on PS4, and I'm like, wait, what? I'm not getting this. The only thing that will, the only thing that won't be like a nail in the coffin for this is if, if this is just a timed exclusive and not right. like a forever exclusive, which I, this is no way this is a forever. No way. So, yeah. This yeah. is a time. Even the wording, they're just like their official statement is coming exclusively to Xbox One holiday 2015, and that's it. They're yeah. not like saying they won't clarify beyond that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just in the initial reaction is it's just it's bad for it. And the sales for that, like that the the they were compla- Square Enix was complaining about the sales of the right. first Tomb Raider. <laughs> right. So what yeah. I mean, people have been saying this. What do you go and do? You go and put it on the system that in the end, might end up winning. Who knows? But right now, it is not the leading platform. Why would you do this? Like, why wouldn't you lead with the stronger platform and be like, oh, we'll come to Xbox One later? So Microsoft must have thrown a lot of money at them. It had to be a huge, a lot of money to like cover paycheck. that. But if for whatever crazy reason this isn't just a timed exclusive, no one's gonna like tumors gonna die off, and they're gonna have to try again. They're gonna like start over with all, all the goodwill they made with the last one. They're gonna burn all. I mean, that. yeah, it's, it's like Empire Strikes Back being exclusive to a couple theaters. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is the thing. Everyone's gonna be on board for this. You, you, yeah. you, you, you know, it's not like you know the seventh installment in this really long running series. You're like, oh, weird that the franchise is going in that direction. It's like, it took such an effort to like con- re- convince people, like, no, 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 we're actually you know doing something different and exciting and compelling, and you know we can build a franchise off of this first new game with the you know this reinvention of Lara, and then it's like, oh no, all of you. Three million people don't get to play it. Yeah, shoot, it feels <laughs> rotten, right? It feels like if you are a fan, it's it, it's not good news. Yeah. It's not something you can announce that it's exciting. It's just like it's like your parents grounding you or something. It's like no, you don't get it. It's yeah. not like you guys do. You just can't sell it that way. It's just bad. It's bad news. Yeah, and I guess it feels <laughs> good if you own an Xbox One. It's like oh, I'm special. I get that Tomb Raider game, and no one else does. You know, I, I get that it does. It makes you feel special. It, it it's rewarding to the people who already invested in that console. But, I guess it uh, just doesn't feel like it makes sense when, you know, like for an ex- established franchise. Right. Well, especially an established franchise in which the previous game is on the PS4 and the PC. Yeah. And, and to clarify, we have we, did we see anything new today from Tomb Raider? No. That was a massive mistake. Yeah. yeah. To not like show a new thing and then ease the pain after the announcement with being like, and we're pleased to announce, you know, showed off at the Xbox, lead with the Xbox press conference with this awesome new yep. gameplay, finally, or some new CG thing or something. It's like, what are appetites? And then like, oh, oh, it's exclusive. Oh, what a weird announcement thing they just made. No, they, they basically said, uh, and you're going to see environments <laughs> like this one from the still of our CG trailer. No. Yeah, that is like, <laughs> that is basically what they said with it. And, uh, yeah, you're right. They should have shown the game. Not the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's a there's a weird parallel here uh, that I think is an interesting uh, contrast is Bayonetta 2 uh, exclusive to Wii U um, because Bayonetta was not in any Nintendo consoles uh, had no business on any Nintendo consoles. Uh, the difference here is Bayonetta 2 was probably not going to be made if Nintendo didn't write that game a big check. Yeah, it has nowhere near the name recognition of something like Tomb Raider. Right, Tomb Raider easily was going to be made. And so it seems like less like like it's they're being aided and it seems like something is being revoked, like something is being taken away from this company uh, that wants it wants its owners to feel special. And you know what I mean? And I think I feel like that's the sentiment behind it. And that's like a hard thing to get over. It's a hard thing to like cross your arms and proudly say this is exclusive, yeah. and grin as you take it away. Guardians from of the Galaxy else. Two coming first to Roku. You're like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> Roku users are like woo hoo Yeah, yeah, exactly. We win. And even then, like Roku users, like honestly, I'd rather I'd rather see it in a theater. <laughs> nope, Roku first. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, Roku, don't do that. Let us watch it in a theater, man. 
I mean, I really only care about exclusivity right now because I own both consoles. Uh, I think multiplayer games, like at least it's a single player thing, you know, so it's like I'm not, so like if you own both consoles, it's like, okay, I'll just get it for that. And then mm -hmm. if I want to do, if they have multiplayer or anything later, like then I'll play with my PS4 friends. But uh, if, if it's something where like, oh man, all my friends aren't going to play that because it's a multiplayer game and they all own Xbox Ones. But other than that, like, I don't really, again, I, don't, I think it's bad news. But for me personally, it's like, well, I guess I'm playing on an Xbox then. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's I mean, <laughs> I'm sure in their design documents, they're planning on a huge multiplayer mode like the first game had. I hope not, but maybe. Well, that was very huge. But speaking yeah. of that, that actually kind of segues. Uh, I mean, they, they did a lot of, you know, kind of catering to the esports crowd with both Evolve and Halo, uh, but by bringing out the the commentators and stuff. Yeah. The Evolve one was a little weird because like they made they made it sound like oh we're already in a match and we're gonna bring these guys out and they're gonna commentate on the match and it's like that was time too well like those Evolve matches can take a little while. Blood. Those were shoutcasters. Yeah. Those weren't those weren't commentators. They were shoutcasters. Okay. Explain the difference. I don't know. I don't know the difference. Did they have a lower third that said shoutcasters? Yeah, casters? exactly. And they were like, they were introduced as shoutcasters. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was clearly like a pre-recorded match that they were they were out there live on stage. Like that sounds like a really desperate EverQuest class. <laughs> shoutcaster. <laughs> you know, isn't that what they were in the Dune movie with uh, Patrick Stewart? Wasn't Patrick Stewart a shoutcaster? No, a tangent. Sorry. Get a yeah. Tongue to cast a spell. I didn't Dude, feel yeah, like Obi Wan can do that. Yeah. I didn't feel like the evolve thing was that significant though. I mean, it was like, oh, it's it's here. It's like you can mix and match hunters and monsters, but it's like okay. Yeah, was the Kraken a new monster? Have they shown the Kraken before? They showed the Kraken at E3. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was just really, it was, you know, the configuration of the teams, but you weren't in the match long enough to really appreciate that, anyways. Um, and then I guess Halo. I mean, Halo was kind of cool because they did take the time to show both single player and multiplayer of the Master Chief Collection, uh, and sort of teased the Halo 5 beta, but it was still like weird stuff. Weird stuff. You saw character models and gun models and map models, but nobody in a game doing games. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, the Halo 2 remake stuff looks really nice. So before we move on, I do want to talk about the point you brought up about like trying to go after eSports. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and also uh, Smite, is going to be on the Xbox yeah, Smite. One. They announced a lot of oh, interesting. Yeah, indie, yeah, exactly. indie games. I uh, might try that out. That I yeah, didn't expect, hmm. like uh, Goat Simulator as well. And uh, the Team 17, they're the guys that did Meat Boy, right? No, that's Team Meat did Meat Boy. Team Meat. Okay, what did Team 17 do? Anyways, but they're doing this game called The Escapists. Um, that's kind of funny title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're trying to break out of a prison or something like that. But you're moving on again. I want to talk about esports. Oh, uh, you want to talk about esports? Why okay. do you think? Yeah. He's got a lot of pages to get through, yeah. man. I, I don't think we're even halfway through page two here. <laughs> uh, I do want to like. Do you think that's a feasible market to go after? If so, I think I think it's smart to try. It's actually kind of try. big at Gamescom on the floor. Right. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, if that's the biggest PC market, why not try to at least court it, right? Like, why not? Like, it's not getting smaller. It's just esports yeah. are just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's just a question of, like, when to make that play. And you don't see Sony making any effort at it, actually. Any? Yeah. Really? Right. You know, like, you don't see Sony trying to do any sort of esportish games or selling their system that way. Right. I mean, the closest was they talked about the Crucible stuff in Destiny, but not really. You know, like, they didn't present it as an esport angled thing they were just talking about that multiplayer right like leveling up and getting armor and things like that right it was kind of like the destiny style as opposed to like a like a like a MOBA you know what I mean like where where it's just like we're all even you know we're playing smite I got a controller I'm playing this on my Xbox and then yeah I don't know if it can work I honestly it's hard to I think esports work I think Starcraft became huge because it's a PC game you know what I mean I don't think I don't think that its platform was irrelevant and I, it scares me that Xbox would try to chase it, but I understand why they should try. Well, I mean, I think Halo is already kind of pretty high in, in that world. So, you know, they're, they're trying to, you know, actually feed into that and play off of that. And Halo's you know. high in the esports world? Yeah, I mean, I know a guy that used to be yeah, professional on Halo. So, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's not as big as maybe Counter-Strike or something, but it's out there. What happened to that person? What happened to that person? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what happened to him. It's just not something he does anymore. Well, like, what changed? You'd, you'd have to ask him. Not <laughs> you didn't ask him? 
<laughs> he's just like, nah, man, I don't do that anymore. And you're just like, okay. There was clearly some like Rocky II story you were looking for. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. That didn't happen. I really Sorry, wanted Kyle. It. Oh, I was digging, I was digging, and it just came up with nothing. Well, it all started six years ago. Uh, Damiani, do you think it's a good idea to go after esports? I mean, I, I thought it meant sense. I mean, we've kind of already talked about this, but it made sense to do it at Gamescom. Just because the first time I went was the first Gamescom, and seeing how much of that stuff was on the floor and like how big of a market there is for that in Europe. I mean, it's yeah. becoming more global. I mean, that's where they yeah. premiered uh, yeah. Dota 2. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like, so nobody had seen there. the game, yeah. and they had it on the floor with people competing, like, like top players, Dota players from around the world. Yeah. Very yeah, here we are. Like, like, three or four days straight. Yeah, and Blizzard and, like, hardly does anything outside of BlizzCon anymore, but, like, that year at Gamescom, like, StarCraft 2 was huge there. Like, all, like, the booths set up for it, and everyone got to, like, play multiplayer there. It was, like, yeah, I mean, I think it was more just trying to pander to that market over there. But in terms of, like, the larger scale, I think they're just looking at what people, what's the biggest stuff like right now in terms of online activity, and you look at what those games are, and they're probably like, yeah, we need to get in on that. Because, like, right now it's PC-dominated, but what if we were the one to get that on console? What if we were to get the first console esports game that blows up and it's on, like, Xbox One? I, I think they're – I don't know if they fully grasp what it takes to do that. I mean, it's a little, like, nebulous sometimes. Like, what – like, it's either you're the first out of the gate to do it or you're the first to do it the best, essentially. Like Right. And League of Legends versus Dota, yeah, basically. When Blood was mentioning, like, Halo, I mean – it was a different time then. Like if, if like we were flash forward like everything to like today, and like Halo was just coming out now, and we didn't have all the League of Legends, and we didn't have the Dota, Dota twos. Like Halo, Halo would be like blow up. It would be like amazing. well, Halo is coming out yeah. now because they have the you know well, Master Chief collection. Yeah, and it's, it's but, all coming out. But you yeah. can play every single map, and they got the playlist yeah. and stuff. Like I wonder if they're gonna make a big push. So yeah. like, here is all of the Halo multiplayer content we have ever created all on one thing. Honestly, I think that's Go, too much. You know? I don't think that'll work. I don't think it'll take off with a competitive scene. Yeah. Like something like that. Do you know what I mean? They were very like, excited about that. I when I met with them at Comic Con, they were talking a lot about yeah. like, all of it's in there. You know? And, and Counter Strike was huge it. for its time. It's still <laughs> very popular, but like if Twitch and stuff was around back then, like <laughs> that would have been like insane. That would have like what WoW became probably like that would have been like Counter Strike if like on like Twitch streaming and like esports was where it was when Counter Strike was popular. Totally different timeline right there, Dif different reality where Counter Strike is like whoosh, the, the leader of everything. And, what like, is it like? like Just sorry for the for our listeners. What are you, what is your hand motion you're doing? Oh, the game? hand motion. I thought you meant yeah. the sound effect. Yeah. No, they heard the sound effect. Yeah. Also, one more time. The hand motion. <laughs> I just did the sound effect <laughs> twice. I'm not doing it a third time. Anyway, yeah, we're, we're, going, we're going around in circles here, saying the same thing over and over. But yeah, that, that's why. One of these consoles, they want, or I should say Microsoft and Sony, and more so Microsoft, are trying to figure out how do we get that next big title that appeals to the esports community and can become the next Dota, can become the next Dota 2, can become the next League of Legends, or whatever. I don't think Sony is attempting that at all, though. I don't, that's why I kind of said more so Microsoft, because yeah. it doesn't seem like Sony is too active about it. But if someone were to approach them like, "Hey, we got this new idea," they'd be like, "Yeah, sure. Like, we'll put you up at uh, next E3. We'll get you big on stage." You know what stood out to me was when they were talking about Forza Horizon Two. Mm -hmm. They sold it as the most social racing game of all time. Just driving in a car by yourself. Is extremely social. Oh yeah, no, well, there's, there's, like, there's a lot to it, but yeah. There's a ton to it, but like, how about the fastest racing game of all time, or no. like the most accurate race, the most fun racing game? No, it's the most social racing game of all time. Come on, Kyle, it's buzzwords. So that's, that's a fun, buzzword. Fun's too generic. That's kind of weird that this anymore. year, like, yeah, all three of those games. Drive Club too, yeah, Drive exactly. Drive Club and the crew, they're all trying to be super social, and who knows if uh, that will actually inspire anybody. But you don't even have to be on anymore for you to be social with your friends. You're playing with like That's the right. ghost drive avatars of them. Yeah. yeah. So you're hanging out with your friends even when they're not online. <laughs> hey, well, yeah, buddy, good yeah. to see you. You know. Yeah, that's well, a funny thing. Let's they go about, for a race. Like uh, with Drive Club, they talk about like, oh, you can, uh, you know, you can do anything you can do in the game except actually drive the car. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> From your app, you know, it's like. Oh yeah, that line was pretty funny. Uh, I mean, I guess that's a point. That's the point of our consoles is to drive the car. Um, should we move to Sony? Blood, or do you have I'm any? I'm trying yeah. to think. I mean, uh, we talked about, I mean, we talked a little bit about the indies. Um, but yeah, just a very different kind of uh, feel from one to the next. You know, Sony, 
Sony announced so many games. There's a couple of games on here. Hopefully you remember. I forgot what these games are. We, okay, so what are your notes? Let me see if like, I can t t give a title. The two for I'm, that. I'm forgetting are, okay. are volume and hollow point. Okay, so volume was the one. That's the stealth one. Oh right, yeah. Uh, from uh, Bissell is his last name. The guy who made uh, uh, Thomas was alone. Okay, yeah. Bithel. Oh shit. Yeah, Mike Bithel. Right. Okay, is it Bithel? Mm -hmm. So Bissell is stupid. Uh, remember, Bissell's a vacuum cleaner. Zero right hours of sleep. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, you know, I, I played Metal Gear Solid 2. This is a game I wanted to make since then. It's like yeah. a stealth game. It, it looks pretty cool. Um, and also, it's like narrated by like good voice actors. And so it feels a little bit like Thomas was alone in that sense of just uh, there's more going on here than what we see visually, which right. is cool. Um, and then Hollow Point, that is, uh, oh, yeah, that was weird. That was like Shadow Complex. Where it's like it's like a 2D, but there's four players playing co-op. So imagine playing Shadow Complex with three other people, and you can shoot into the foreground and background. Okay. Yeah. So lots of yeah. So it's like my mind is over. Sony announced so many games in this yeah. in their press conference that some of them washed off of you basically. Yeah. And the funny thing is, though, before their press conference even started, they had so much stuff that it's like, oh, you guys are sitting there waiting. Let's give you four brand new trailers for some of our hottest games. We think about what we were yeah. saying for me three. Yeah. They made that announcement. What was that crazy number that they threw out of all their games that are in development? You know, and it's like this is clearly the place to be if you want games because oh, we have yeah. hundreds. It was like 180, wasn't it? Like 180 games in development I that don't are coming know, that out in the next down. couple of years. Those or numbers I never retain because they're so stupid. Yeah. But they seem stupid. Yeah. Because it seemed like such a huge number, and you're like, there's no way that there's all that that you haven't announced yet. And then like, yeah. pow, it's some of those games come. They come out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With so like they showed titles. new trailers, like gameplay for Infamous First Light. They showed a new Order 1886 with some more gorgeous environments. I really hope they like get the gameplay to match up to what the visuals right. look like. Um, Little Big Planet 3 they showed again, and then they sh yeah they, they they finally officially showed Bloodborne, even though everyone's seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this was all before the press conference began. Yeah, was a crazy thing. And then they had this dumb montage, which was like really good until they started sticking people's faces like extreme close-ups right on the camera. Yeah, it was like it was like Wii stuff, where it's just like we have to show the gamer experiencing this game and so they would show gameplay and then a, like a model like laughing at, at the game. It was the most social press conference <laughs> intro yeah, of all time. Yes, exactly Brandon. <laughs> the same thing, same dumb thing. Um, uh, and the weird bookend to that like is at the end, like you know Sony usually ends with the similar type of montage, but Sony just kind of said goodbye. Everyone got up and started walking out. Which I actually liked. I thought it was classy. <laughs> just you know, have a great show everybody. There was no then. big thing at the end, there was no mm -hmm. montage, it was just that's it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, lots of cool, crazy stuff announced. Um, uh, Q Games came out with this thing called the Tomorrow Children, uh, and, and and these are the guys that made Pixel Junk, and they've made all these like little simple looking things that you know somebody might you know you know try to be derogatory and call them like a flash game or something, right? You know, you had Pixel Junk Eden and Monsters and all of those, and uh, Shooter. Shooter Shooter was really cool. Uh, but this is, you know, like, we're going back to our roots because we started, you know, like I started making 3D games, you know, back in the day in the 80s. Uh, and, and so you have a, a more 3D game, but like, it looks like everything's made, like carved out of wood. And you have these little people that are like mining, like the bodies of giants. And there's like all of these weird different settings. It's, it, and and yeah. sometimes there's not even like really a background. Yeah. It's very stark. Um, uncomfortable, epic Russian music the entire time. Very strange, like it was distinctive. Exactly, Stands distinctive out. is a great word. Yeah. I actually remember there was a lot of. Um, it was kind of fun to hear. I, I imagine it'd be much more informative and fun to actually watch all of the things that you're describing. But I enjoyed getting the commentary outside of my office from Mr. Bloodworth, who's like watching the stream and locking everything down. And that definitely like kind of drew me away from what I was doing, hearing this like huge Russian chorus chanting. I'm just like, yeah, I bet that game stands out. You know, I bet that's a little unusual. And actually, Sony themselves, I think multiple times throughout this press conference, said we're gonna we're gonna show you some weirdo games. We're gonna show you. Some some games that you're not used to typically seeing in press conferences, and that's what we want to bring to you. Uh, and the, yeah, it was a lot of unconventional games. Yeah, and then the next one they showed right, right after that, they did this weird thing to where like they didn't even give you a break. Like, yeah. Like they would end the trailer, and then they'd be black for like a second, and then here's another trailer for some other game you haven't heard of. Uh, and the next one was uh, the, the Vanishing of Ethan Carter, and it was like this weird, Remember that? spooky... Yes. <laughs> Have you guys seen that before? They had a trailer that we didn't like at all. I got a okay. I gave that trailer so this, a bad score. But this one, this this guy was good. This was a really it was a good, good trailer. You're creepy, right. bizarre, Cthulian uh, nightmare going on there that I'm down with. Yeah, uh, and, and yeah, and they had another really weird horror, the PT. 
like, yes. interactive thing available now. And then people can go download that right now, and they called it a teaser. The world's first interactive teaser. Which on is not the, true. Well, on the PlayStation Store right now, when they were going to download it, it says it's a game. It doesn't say it's a, it doesn't label, label this trailer. It says, like, game free. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, yeah, it's because you can actually play it. But it's, I, it's I, I love this format. I love announcing something at a press conference. It's available right now. Go get it. I yeah. love, like, like okay, before anybody comes out on stage and butchers something in a foreign language or just is really uncomfortable and sweaty and, like, nervous and, like, flubs a line or something like that, just, like, fade to black, trailer, go. Like, that's how I want to find out about stuff. Talk about it afterward. It was paced very well. So I, I do like those transitions, Blood, where they just, like, jump right into it as, as opposed to, like, hey. Like you were saying with the comedy things, like, you're about to see something funny. It's like, don't try to sell it up. You know, sell it too much before you show it. You're right, yeah. Because you don't want to give people the wrong impression. You're like, just... Just jump in. Lessons from Brandon this week. This is a valuable. <laughs> well, I'm a broken record with that with press conferences. That's I, I feel really strongly. Surprise, surprise. That, like trailers should always lead the conversation when yeah, but you we announce would, something. This is like our first like post press conference GT time. Really, this is our first time to really get to be able to do this and just be like, hey, this is what you didn't do great. This is what you did great. Directly after a press conference. Yeah. This is the yeah, closest, yeah, this we, is the shortest amount yeah. of time from press conference to GT time exactly. that, we've, <laughs> that we've had. So it's all fresh. Um, Hellblade. Somebody was making fun of the title for like being too much like Heavenly Sword, but I think there may be some actual real connection there. A little or winky connection, maybe. Yeah, um, but it, I, the whole time I was like, is, "Is this Heavenly Sword? Is this Heavenly Sword?" And you know, and, and uh, yeah, and then it came up as, as Hellblade. The character looked a lot like Naruko, but like maybe like a little bit of like if Naruko wandered into the enslaved world and put on some more makeup or something. And we should mention it, it's from Ninja Theory. Yeah. Starts. But the first thing you see is an independent game. And you're like, this looks too good to be an independent game. And then you, they say from their makers of DMC and Heavenly Sword, Enslaved. Yeah, it was a little weird because when they said an independent game, then like this, like, sliced through the words. Yeah. And so I thought they were they were almost like, it's like, oh, no, it's not. But then they did that with, like, all of their text. Yeah, including the title, I think. So I don't know exactly what they were trying to get at mm. with that. Yeah, but cool. Uh, that is that's a, a That was a new announcement. Of a game from Ninja Theory that they're making themselves. No publisher on that. No no Capcom or Sony to say, hey, that's not right. Who did Enslaved? Who published Enslaved? Oh, uh, like Namco. Was, yeah, Namco. Yeah, yeah, Bandai yeah. Namco, yeah. No Bandai Namco breathing <laughs> down your neck. Uh, Damiani, what stood out to you from, from the Sony press conference? Uh, so, I mean, I was catching up on watching it when I got into the office, so I was actually listening to it on mm -hmm. the way in. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so it was a little weird hearing like trailer music, but not being able to see stuff. I don't recommend that. It's kind of weird. But this is put in perspective trailer music selections, like a whole different thing when you're not like seeing the video. Uh, rhyme. Uh, yep. I, yeah, dude, rhyme. The more I see a rhyme, the more, oh, I get to troll you now, Kyle. Because that's how, I know it was 10 years ago, over 10 years ago, but like this is how the Wind Waker should have looked 10 years ago, especially the water. The water in that game is so good. You can see into the water. Sorry, that bugged me about the Wind Waker. Because it was always end. solid you blue. You could not see through right. that. Sure, that's anyway, fair. That aside, I just wanted to troll you for a second. Mm -hmm. that, that game looks really awesome. It really does. And actually seeing a lot of it in action and seeing some of like the, uh, what they're alluding to with the gameplay mechanics, I was like, all right, this is cool. This getting like this is for all of you who still hope for The Last Guardian, stop hoping. You can have this instead. Now you can start getting excited for rhyme like this, <laughs> yeah. is, this is like the help you get over this is the rebound because the developers uh tequila works i think is their name yes uh they've not done anything to the scale before and so when we had that first trailer i was like oh my goodness and then you like you google tequila works and you're like uh-oh <laughs> and a trailer like this yeah. like undoes an uh-oh it kind yeah. of like relieves that like this might be mad you know it takes away some fear and yeah it was it was a great trailer there's one shot in the rain where there's just yeah. a bunch of people in cloaks and you're like what is this game about <laughs> or when the kids riding those weird two-legged like ball shaped things yeah across, like the water oh, it's yeah. like what are these and he's just like riding it like what's up just insane imagery <laughs> yeah. uh insane imagery and a really really cool again just unconventional game to show during a press conference yeah but a great, uh, it shows how you can have a great showing just visually at a press conference, especially if you're going to be involved in like montages and stuff. It's like you want to get your quirky, weird stuff out there. Um, so visually, when you're piecing together all this stuff after the fact, like what really did I like? Like 
that game stood out for you primarily visually like you didn't learn anything distinct yeah. about the story there weren't any cool announcements about exclusivity or pre-order bonuses oh, actually or like, i just realized oh, we'll what we forgot. i realized what we forgot from microsoft uh, one of their biggest things was quantum break they sure. finally showed the, the gameplay in Quantum Break. Yes, that uh, was. Uh, Sam Lake promised that we would be. He didn't promise, but he said that we would be speechless after this. Yeah. What and, was, and were you speechless? I was not speechless. Actually, Huber, Huber kind of the hype master. He kind of made me think about it a different way because he's like, "It's Bullet Time 2.0," and it's like, "Oh, it totally is." He's like, "Those guys did the Bullet Time and Max Payne, and now yep. it's like they they're they're taking that mechanic and furthering it." Uh, with all of this extra lore and stuff. Uh, the first part of it, I, like the cover shooting, I wasn't really that into it. It's like, oh, well, you can stop time and run up and like slap a guy in the face. And like, ha, ha, ha. That's, that's kind of how I felt. Like there's something about that that felt less serious and more like, oh, you can't do anything. I'm going to hit you. It came off as comedic <laughs> to you. That is really funny. Uh, yeah, like another power is just like you can shoot a bunch of bullets and then make them all hit a guy at once. Mm. And which, I mean, yeah, you know, it's just like, it's a lot of like st stopping and going, basically. It's a lot of like just slowing down time and then I do my cool thing and like gotcha, like ha 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 again, um, until you find enemies that you can't slow down time on. And then it's just like, oh, now well, what do you Well, what was do? weird was like, because they, they described the stutters, right? Like you're apparently one of the few people or whatever that can go into a stutter. And, like, time freezes. Yeah, all of time freezes. Really and, cool or, effects. Or at least sort of slows down because you could like hear people's like speech in slow motion as you walk by them. I interpret that as their, like their thoughts. Uh, they're resonating thoughts as they're frozen in time. That's a stretch. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but when he was actually fighting like the other guys that had the technology to be in the stutter as well, yeah, like he was still able to like use his powers on them. So I'm not sure exactly how the lore or, or whatever works out in that, or if it's just. Eh, cool it's mechanics. probably yeah. It's probably not worth figuring out like the science behind stopping time and like running up and slapping a guy in the face before he can see you. But. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm still, like, it's interesting, but I'm still unconvinced as, like, how much I'm going to care about that game. Uh, what, what do you need? What's going to take to convince you? I don't know. I mean, I just... A really I, good story. I mean... You exactly. Know, it's, 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 that's a huge push of that thing. Right. Um, something that they talk about. Over, you know, drama is you know, going to be a very dramatic game. He brought up the it's TV the show, show again. You know. Yeah, he brought it up again. Yeah. I'm You're going to want to see all serious. sides of this story. It's yeah. like, well, we need to know what the story is. It's yeah. Like how that's, yeah, how that's all going to work together. Because it doesn't feel like, I mean, it's it's realistic to a degree, but it doesn't feel like it's realistic enough to where you could like jump between those two things without noticing. But their games have always sort of had that strange juxtaposition, anyways. Oh right, like in, like the, like live action, like stuff. the stand up of Alan Wake. You know, like you walk into the store and like there's your character, but he's like a photograph. You know. Um, yeah. It's, I don't think the TV show is within the game. I think it's a whole separate thing. Is, is it not? Yeah, I know they're supposed to work together somehow, but I don't know how. Yeah, and I feel like that game is still very far away, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's like further than Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Forgive me. <laughs> uh, but back to Sony. Uh, cardboard boxes, Mike. Oh, yeah. Metal Gear. Yeah. Uh, Hideo Kojima. I really it's liked like, their setup I, uh, for this. The last time I was here, it was five years ago at the first Gamescom. You have huge expectations at like, this point. Oh, man, this is oh my gosh, this trailer. We're going to live stream tomorrow, but yeah. we're going to get a new trailer now, yeah. and then we're going to see the gameplay for this. Like, and they're going to finally mention like some names that we've been wanting to hear, mm -hmm. like uh, Volgan. Right, but it's happening. Cardboard box. So I thought, like, as soon as it starts, so again, remember, I'm in the car listening to this, so I didn't actually see it. <laughs> yeah. So I hear it, I'm like, wait, this is the E3 demo. Why are we, oh, man, are they just showing this to the, like, European audience? But didn't they release this already? Like, I'm like, wait, there's going to be a troll somewhere. The whole thing was a troll. I was like, here we go, Kojima, when does it change over? And they're like, all right, so today we're going to show you the new, new box uses for mm -hmm. this. And I was like, here we go. And then they showed how the box could be like a saluting soldier so that people just like walk by it and like, whoa, like, okay. It's right, right. So you paint your box yeah, like you, a soldier yeah, and you stand well, up and the, the guards are like, oh, there's, that's just another guy. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, you put an image on the box. I don't yeah. know if I'd call it painting. But sure. Yeah. And then like they did like in typical Metal Gear fashion, they had like a, like pretty much almost naked woman, you know. She had a bikini. Yeah. Bikinis are allowed. I know. But okay. I mean, it's just Kojima has a history of like doing all like all those images <laughs> stuff. Like in like in Revengeance, it was funny when you went up to a poster and you're supposed to slice it, and it was just the girl in the bikini. I was like, eh, this this is Metal Gear. We've been doing this since like you know Metal Gear Two. You know, knocking on the posters and the alerts. 
so you can do that to distract the guards, which you know they've had like the mag the porn magazines right. before. They, they like, run to you. Yeah, they if they you show up it. as the bikini and lady, like, they run this, over to you. Like yeah. the bed of roses or whatever, but it's really still you know. It's another right. bikini lady. And then yeah. they showed like the PlayStation box, you know, putting it on his head. Oh, his head, yeah. Yeah. So they were like, hey, we're having fun with boxes. So it ended up being entertaining while also showing off. How are you going to be able to do new things with the trademark box in Metal Gear? So it was surprisingly effective, but I don't think it was necessar- necessarily what everyone was hoping for, but it was still enjoyable. I think it's a good idea uh, strategically because it's it's very different from what we saw last year at E3. Uh, last year? Or yeah, yeah, la- not this year's E3. Okay. You know, when it was official, oh. that we had that really long Phantom Pain trailer. Yeah. looked very serious and didn't have a joke at the end. You know, most Metal Gear Solid trailers have, like, a joke after, like, the title. This one was, like, serious all the way through, and so it kind of felt like a way different... Even Ground Zeroes, there's very little levity in Ground Zeroes, um, and so it's cool to see this kind of thing where it's just like, hey, we still got a little goofy side. Yeah, it was interesting how they did that. And even at, like, this even this year's E3 trailer, it was, like, men descending into madness, and the yeah. whole wiping the... Uh, ashes you know, on ashes his face, face right? which yep. has now become... The all over my face like meme gif that everyone uses. <laughs> yeah. But then the E three actual demo they showed there was like first one of the first things to do early on is like use the uh, Fulton recovery system to send a goat into. The, I was like, yeah. All perfect. right, we're we're, we're back, back to, in we're business. Back to Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're not completely abandoning the quirky comedic stuff. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Kojima, for bringing that into into a press conference not the right place shouldn't have done it but i'm really happy he did yeah oh well, that happened right after that really serious well started to be serious but the the shadow of mordor trailer where like you see like his family getting tortured or killed or whatever and then but then all of a sudden like sauron like puts down the mace and this mountain explodes and it's like okay you just, you just went over the edge on that one well, but i, I, I think imagine, it's interesting yeah. what you find humorous no, you said the, the, the Metal Gear humorous thing came after the Shadow, not humorous thing. No, so he was like weird. Sauron destroying a mountain is funny. Is that funny It to was you? funny because it was out of place. I'm speaking for blood. I probably shouldn't say. But, but yeah. I mean, what? Settle this. Was, is Sauron <laughs> de- destroying a mountain funny to you? Yes. It was <laughs> the imagery implied that Sauron smashing down a mace destroyed like... You should be Mount terrified. Oh well, yeah, I, I, I right. yeah. It was just as weird. Yeah, it was, was over the top, is what you're yeah. saying. Okay. It, it, yeah, we went a little bit too far. Um, it was just like, bang, and then the mountain explodes. And it was like, it was just two different things got together. But that, yeah, the, the implication was just really funny to me. I think Sauron destroyed that mountain. I don't think that was two things cut together conveniently. Yeah. He actually broke it and then had to rebuild it in time for Frodo. <laughs> oh, so he had to build Mount Doom. Yeah, is what you're saying? He, Mount Doom. Sauron built Mount Doom. That is canon. Yeah. You have to read the second Hobbit book to find that. <laughs> uh, Brandon, I'm sorry, I interjected. Uh, I think we're talking about S- Sony's levity. Do you have right. something to comment on that? Uh, well, I was just going to say, like, I'm sure if you're putting a press conference together, you know, I'm sure you, you leave a time slot for Shadow of Mordor, and then you're like, oh, it's so great, we're going to have Kojima, we'll put him in here. Sure. And then, like, two weeks leading into the press conference, you finally get that Shadow trailer, and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> and the bo- uh, well, and then the you totally, the that's not going to work. Yeah, but there's nothing we can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you just create a time slot for these people, and, like, the tone of what they want to bring to it is really up to them, I imagine, in most cases. Uh, one very serious game that I'd like to talk about actually is Until Dawn. I think that very um, serious. Yeah, it's like a teen slasher thing. Okay, you're right. Uh, scary. Yeah, I mean, I think it's gonna yeah, it's gonna have but it's gonna it, it's still it's gonna be kind of like the not quite scream, but you know like uh, what is it? I can't think of the name, but um, but yeah, it's just like one of those the ones that go up to like six or whatever, you know? Like, yeah, I mean, like Bloodworth, come out every year. Bloodworth is going to be laughing the whole time, but to me, it looks <laughs> like a very scary game. Uh, that's like a legit horror game. Here's the premise. Uh, you have eight characters. Um, all of them could die by the end of the game, and all of them can survive. And like they are. They're like teenagers in a cabin in the woods, basically. You know what I mean? It's that stupid premise. Mm. Are you disappointed by that? So again... I only heard this at first when I heard the main or the one of the first character's voice and like they could all die or they could all live and as soon as I heard the first guy started to talk I was like you're dying <laughs> no he doesn't have to die you can if you're good enough no, at the game no I meant like I was like I don't oh, care okay. sorry about that oh, I meant I, I don't care like I wanted you're I was like you, if off. you die I don't care Okay. But they're I giving you the freedom to do that yeah you know, exactly if you, yeah if you're waiting for that to happen I do think it's, it's yeah. interesting that nobody's 
re- I don't feel like anyone's really taken advantage of that kind of take before. I mean, obviously, like I said, like those movies are hugely popular. People go and get the the cheap thrills, but most of the like horror games are like solitary, lonely experiences. You're a guy. Yeah, like yeah. You, you don't have like a bunch of teenagers running around being stupid. You right, know? you're just like a serious man. Where's my wife? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is. It's funny to just see a bunch of teenagers get murdered. We'll be laughing it Hilarious. up with Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, I think basically uh, Sony accidentally leaked its like list of games that'll have demoed on the floor, mm. and so we actually knew this was coming uh, until dawn. Uh, I totally just, forgot about the game though. Like. Yeah, me too. Like, Absolutely. People were saying that title, I'm like, what is that? I don't know what it is, but then when I saw it, I was like, oh, this game. Mm-hmm. I forgot this game existed. It might be cool. It really might be interesting. And a game, also like, that's just like a a game where we can't point. Oh, it's like this game, mm-hmm. like that. Until Dawn is like its own weird dumb thing. Which yeah, is, it seems which like almost have you know with the interactive elements, it almost has like a little bit of heavy rain in there. And, um, but yeah, just definitely more, more coming from the the film uh, inspiration, I think, than any other games. Uh, so besides from the games themselves, uh, two big news stories mentioned. Uh, firstly, uh, Sony made the point to make it very clear that there are 10 million P- PS4s sold to people who took it out of the box and are playing it right now. Not, not shipped. They're like, those aren't shipped. Those are 10 million sold. 10 million PlayStation 4s have been sold in nine months. We talk a lot about sales. But the, the number 10 million is significant because at the beginning of the last generation, what we call the seventh generation, uh, as Damiani rolls his eyes, <laughs> I just do it to get you. I just do it. I just want the eye roll. That's all I want. Uh, what'd you say? I feel like we like say seventh and eighth gen like every other day. What do you mean? Because we're in oh, games journalism. That's why. Yeah. yeah. Uh, something this week. Maybe I'm just so like, we're having, obligated to. I think we're dreams about it then, maybe. <laughs> just where I walk into your dreams and no, be like, hey, you're not, you're not you're not seven <laughs> It's more like seven people gen. just constantly refer to those terms. And I'm just like, no, it's current and last gen. What is wrong with you, you people? You got to embrace that seven and eight. It's like eight. the zombie apocalypse, but people just saying like eighth and seventh gen. I'm like, I've been trying to drop it to seven G, you know, just to. Seven G sounds good because right, honestly, I want it's not, you it's in not a fluent hold. conversation, uh, intelligent discussion. Not only to use eighth and seventh, I want you to correctly refer oh to first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth generation. <laughs> yeah, referring to everything. Sure. Next, next time we have a top ten discussion and we're doing like multiple generations, you have to use that Can I be terminology. Honest? The first four, I have no idea. You know what I mean? It's all just different Ataris. I have no <laughs> idea like what the first four are. <laughs> uh, you know, but I mean that's just an easy. It's just so clear. It couldn't be clearer. Seventh and eighth, like this current gen, this last gen is. No, seven and eight are clear. One through four is just like, what is that? I it's think like the only thing that's not clear is, is is somebody saying current gen because then they don't know whether which one you're talking about. Right. Yeah. It's only weird for that first year. But honestly, I think that the like adoption of the PlayStation Four is going to move along. I think we can say current gen sooner than ever. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Honestly, I yeah. think that then 10 million, 10 million is crazy. Uh, at the beginning of the seventh gen, uh, Xbox was notorious for saying we got to get to ten million. Because the first to 10 million wins, baby. Uh, PS4 is there within nine months. Uh, did the PS4 win, baby? That's my question to the panel. No. I mean, whatever. Where were where, where they getting that number from? Like, were right, they, exactly. Were they was, backing up? With, I know the quote. It was historical. It, it was like, if you look back at all the other console generations, straight back to number one, uh, if you get to the one who gets to 10 million first is the ultimate victor. Uh, well, I mean, things change eventually. You know, combo breakers. You know, that's not how it's always going to be. <laughs> right. So to quote Back to the Future, history is going to change. I think, we, honestly. We you, son. Yeah, I think. We, uh, you. we you. We you did not get to 10 mil yet. Oh, you say we, we, we you still we can? We will be the combo breaker. I think that we is a weird outlier from the last generation um, because. Uh, there, I, w- I did it. I did it for you. I said last well, generation. From yeah. the seventh generation. Yeah, because when you say seven and eight, you sound like you know review scores, and seven or eight, seven and eight are the, the only, only scores, scores that ever exist. Absolutely right. So I mean, unless you're just, it's last of us, yeah, playing exactly. into <laughs> the trend of those two numbers. So yeah, Wii was a weird outlier, and I think that the Wii might get overcome by the 360 soon or something. I don't know what the actual numbers are, but it's it's a weird thing where it's just like, oh, that might actually we plummeted in its later years, and I mean, uh, what? I mean, they're right though. 
PCs reach 10 million first before everything. They're still dominating. Are they dominating yeah. in, in software sales? Everything. There are more there are more PCs out there than there are game consoles. <laughs> That's true. Great point. Might not have a great attach rate for software, <laughs> video game yeah, software yeah, sales. Yeah, so attach overall software, you know, yeah. and like in services, you know. Minesweeper attach rate is like a 100%. Yeah. Netflix. <laughs> it's pretty good. Net Netflix subscriptions. Um, so anyway, uh, the other big news story, uh, not even huge news story, is that uh, OS 2.0 basically is coming yeah, for the, for the PlayStation 4. Yeah, that thing that everyone thought they forgot about is actually happening. Yeah, so when the PlayStation 4 was first like announced during its first meeting, that was like one of the features. Yeah. You can have your friend play on your t on your TV. You can watch your friend play your game for you in front of you. I thought that was the dumbest thing. Who would want that? But yeah. apparently well, a lot of people thought it was that. like some pie in the sky. He's like, no, you can't. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but uh, they're promising. Now you can. We, we can have that ability. Um, and not only that, if it's like a, if it's a same screen co-op or competitive game, say Street Fighter, uh, you can play with each other. Your friend doesn't need to own that game. Your friend can just stream off of your console to your friend's TV. And isn't that like, then they have a more tangible ex ex example was for Far Cry 4, the keys to Karat. That's everything. a little different. Is that's, it a little that's, different? Cause right. I can't, I that's like, like you, like the you same, have a key. Like, that's like having the, two. like when they have the games on Steam where they give you an extra key. Only with keys to Karat, you get like 10 keys, and then you can give a key to somebody and then play with you for like two hours. But it said like you don't need to have the game or even download it, is what his wording was when he finished it up. So I was like, wait, you don't even have to download it. The so two hours is the issue there. That's yeah, like, like, that's how, you're how giving you... your friend a demo, basically. Yeah, so I didn't know if it was going to structurally work like that, but it seems a little too soon because it sounds like PlayStation Share is yeah, a little ways off. Yeah, Share is a little yeah. different, I think. But it's kind of conceptually the same thing. Like, you know, hey, come play my game. Because I suck at it, so come beat it for me. I just want to see if it can be like as easy to troll like when everyone's doing Xbox. Like people, what was a guy who was clever and named his like uh, Xbox Live his gamer tag handle like Xbox or whatever Xbox One. So when people told him like we're shouting at them, and oh, it was like player, Xbox Close. So oh. turn off the yeah, 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 yeah. So I wonder if there's like a similar way to, for like to get access to other people's systems. Like they're in the middle of the game. And you just can like figure out a way to get a hold. And just run off the just edge. Take, take time. away their controls and grief them and stuff. <laughs> Be like, no, don't do that. I'm sure you can only do it to friends, but you can still troll friends. You can be like, oh, sorry, man, my cat got on the controller. Yeah, you could yeah. run on a whole bunch of things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I do like about it is uh, it's the most social feature ever. But like, you can <laughs> talk to your buddy while you're playing a game, which I think is okay. You know, I'm, I can understand that appeal. Of just you're both watching a game together and you're playing it and you know oh, let me take this guy you know we can swap every level it's like you're on the same couch together I, I get it but I'm not clamoring for it yeah Mar Mario Party needs this yeah, Mario Party cool. needs this absolutely pass the controller to, you know virtually so you can play your four-player Mario Party from anywhere yeah I mean really that's kind of what it goes back to right it's just like DS download play right? you 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 want to play multiplayer with somebody you know they don't have to have the game you just you know, do that quick little transfer, and then you can play together. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, I can see why it's scary to publishers and manu manufacturers, console manufacturers, because like that is less sales. That is fewer sales. But uh, I don't know. I, I think but it's, it's it's the way that you know, like if you go back to the couch example, I mean, that's what we've been doing all along. Yeah, but and we don't do that anymore. We all play online now. We play at our own homes. Or we just don't. Apparently, kids Skype now. We learned that on GT time. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> glad you figured that out. <laughs> So, uh, Blood, are there any more games you want to point out that you were like, wow, that's very cool? I got a few. I got a short list. Of, uh, of, before we go, I Yeah, like, well, wanna... definitely uh, seeing Tearaway on the PS4. Yeah. Tearaway unfolded. And, and I, I thought it was really cool, like, what they said, because, you know, I, I thought that it was crazy that anyone would try to port that game. And they were like, well, we tried to port Tearaway, and then we realized we couldn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's probably the best use of this freaking light bar ever. Is, you know, even though it's not really using the light bar, but you know, like you use it to like shine a light into the game. Yeah. And uh, you know, make things grow and light through tunnels and all of that kind of thing. And um, and yeah, just like really like focusing in on the unique interface they have, the same way that they did with the Vita. Uh, and I still haven't got to like really play Tearaway because I don't have a Vita and we don't have any in the office at this time. You know. So yeah. So like, now you too can play Tearaway. Yeah. Cool. So and I've always yeah been looking forward to that game. That game. Debuted at Gamescom back in the day, I believe. 
I think you're 100% right. Yeah. Shoot, is that two years ago at this point? I think so. Yeah. Wow. I think I was working for GTTV at that point. Hmm. I was at the press conference, but. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, but yeah, so that was really cool. And then the Michelle Ansel game, Wild. Wild. Oh my goodness. This is another game where it's just, it's visuals. It's just, there's like a, a giant elf lady inside of a giant tree and you like you are just like five inches compared to her and she's just kind of like she's not intimidating she's just like looking at you ready to tell you what but the thing you're saying is you should be you can play as her you can play as anything that's alive i can be a boar i can just ro roam around as a boar these beautiful lands and be a boar and then maybe like somebody can ride on my back yeah well sure. they had that one weird shot i mean some of the animation was a little weird to be honest like there but because there's like a one where the one person was sitting on the horse and the other person was standing, like holding onto their shoulders. Uh, so I'm not sure what that was about. Did, you, yeah. did that person just like hop off and hop onto another horse or what? Um, anything, dude. Wild's about anything. We wild. Yeah. Hunt, live, survive, <laughs> explore, go underwater. Underwater, there was like a giant skeleton underwater and you could just swim up to it with these giant fish. Man, it was cool. It did give me the sense that there is like a maybe some kind of multiplayer aspect to it, and then Absolutely, people kind yeah. of having like a little, you know, like the skeletons they showed. Were, they weren't scary skeletons. They were kind of like joking around and dancing and stuff. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was yeah, mysterious, uh, fun fantasy kind of game. Crazy, a game unlike we've seen. Really interesting. Uh, a couple of games I want to point out that I think did a good job uh, at Gamescom. Uh, Call of Duty: Advanced Warfare had a really good showing. A really good gameplay mm. demo. Usually, like, basically what they used to do at E3, you know, even, like, in the interest of time. Uh, I think they showed really well. Uh, it looks good. You know, it had, like, a, you know, a high octane. But, it, like, showed things are like, whoa, we can, we can do that in games now. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> there was one game within the montage of the Xbox ID, ID at Xbox, that was called Ghost of a Tale. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you're, like, a mouse. And it looks so good. And someone on Twitter said, oh, yeah, dude, that's Rat Souls. You got to check it out. It's, it's like, Rat Souls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, check out, if you can, Google Ghost of a Tale. That game looks really cool. Oh, no, I have heard of this. That wasn't the first time they've showed it, right? No, it's not. It's yeah. the first time they showed it for Xbox, I think. Yeah. S sorry, the Gaff thread called it, like, Rat Souls. Really? Like, a while ago. This cool. is now rushing back to me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that game looks legit. That, oh, man, I'm into a game where I can play as a rat. Absolutely. Can I be a rat in wild? I hope it so. It might have been in the yeah. montage at E3 too, but I'm not sure. Man. They uh, had the same, the funny thing, they had the same song. Yeah. As the E3 montage. Um, and then what else did I love big time? Um, I guess that's it. I, yeah, that's, I loved all those games. There were some interesting games shown today. Um, I guess Gamescom is allowed to be a little weirder because it's a little more European. I guess that's just the thing. <laughs> They kind of acted like that. They're just kind of just like, and here we like to be weirder. And so like, go ahead, be weird. Show us your weird ones. Uh, there was a new Witcher trailer that came out too, but it wasn't, there's no new gameplay in it. Is it, it weird? Uh, not really. It's shot Pass. really well, actually. The, the, they have the like, developers standing in some pretty cool locations. And oh, so it's like a developer diary even? It's more of like, let's actually explain a little bit more of the world and stuff to you if you're a newbie, so. I'm a newbie. So it's okay, good for that. so I should check that out. Um, uh, Brandon Damiani, were there any other things that stood out to you that you wanted to comment on before we go? No, that I can think of. Um, I just realized I got to do some uh, corrections. We got a we got a uh -oh. little buttload of co corrections this week. Uh -oh. Okay, so corrections music start. We didn't have Elise's microphone on last week. That's correction number one, or maybe apology. Sorry to Elise. Sorry to the listeners who wanted to listen to Elise. We didn't have that microphone on. Uh, Lord of the Rings: Shadow of Mordor is coming out this fall. We did this whole list of like huge games that are coming out in the fall. I neglected that game, and I think that might be a huge game. Yeah, what? And Metal Big Planet 3? Yeah. <laughs> He's neglecting it again. Yeah, I'm going to neglect that one again. I think um, the thing is, uh, like what we've learned with things, like with games of the month. Yeah. You, as hard as you try, you can never get it. There's always, You're always gonna forget some one. game that the, somebody is looking forward to yeah. that you don't find when you're trying to put that list together. And sometimes it's a game that you knew was coming out, but for whatever reason, like just trying to dig through and sort through all of those dates, it's, there's not really like it, 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 as simple as it feels like that should be. It never is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something exactly. always gets missed. You always miss something. But I feel like that was a big miss. Also, there was a moment where Damiani was talking about just like, and then Nintendo would give all away give away all of its DLC for costumes for free. And I said, Damiani, that has never happened in the history of DLC. Apparently, it has. 
apparently a Gears of War game, I think two did that. I didn't fact check it because that's impossible for me to fact check. So I'm assuming, yeah, at one point a Gears of War game gave away all of its cosmetic DLC for free. So you got me. I stand corrected and corrections music. Whew. What a buttload, right? Uh, our bets. We can't we can't cash in on our bet yet because uh, we had oh, this. I could I could possibly win this one because I wasn't still win there. This one. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Elise made a really smart bet for you actually. She did research. She like looked up past games and things. She put in a lot of work. She can be on the show anytime she wants. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll figure out how big the Hyrule Warriors file size is uh, before next week's episode, um, which will probably be from our new studio. And again, yes, we need to end with that, of course. We're moving. Go ahead, pitch it, Brandon. Um. Yeah, we're moving, you know. <laughs> no. It's not a big deal. Bigger! This is kind of, you know, for the first time in the history of game trailers, we'll have our own exclusive production space. You know, if you're into that. Um, I, I'm totally picturing, you know what the comments are going to be. People no. are going to watch the next episode. We're going to be in a brand new space. Yep. Uh, that is it is a GT branded production stage that we are building as we speak. People are building chairs and tables and backdrops and all this stuff. And people are going to hate it. They're going to be like, oh, I missed the bricks. There was just something about the table with the pieces of paper and the, the cords, iPhone set up and the cross. cords crisscrossing everywhere. It just kind of had, I don't know, it just won't be the same GT time without it. I liked it when sometimes <laughs> it was a half hour because someone else reserved that room. I kind of like microphones going dead. It's just some kind of mystery. You never know who you're going to hear or not hear. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, we don't, th this room doesn't operate like this most yep. days. This is where people actually have conferences. And uh, we will be in a space where no conferences are held. Yeah. It is just used to shoot shows. Um, we're going to uh, do all of our shows next week, hopefully. If we don't, we will try again the week following to try to get back up to our regular production schedule. And then we have all sorts of new ideas for stuff we can do beyond that. So very, very exciting time for game trailers, but might mean that things are a little rocky. Um, for the next couple weeks, but it is all in the interest of doing kick-ass coverage of games. Ever upward. Perfect for Gamescom to be the time that we're just like, we're out, bye. Yeah, picking up stuff. See <laughs> oh man, rough week. Uh, it's been a I rough, have, rough I week. Have an entire, the entire library to pack up. The entire, what did you say, 2,500? About 2,500 games. Yeah, we gotta pack that up. And, and I, I still have to filter through the stupid old Xboxes, figure out which ones actually work, and not take the rest Stupid of them. Xboxes. These stupid old Xbox. I'll take bad boys off your hands if you need any like, help. No, that I don't need to get rid of. Uh, Brandon, why don't you did such a good job. Why don't you close us off? Um, so these are all of our uh, Twitter handles. Uh, you can follow us all on Twitter. You can follow us collectively at the Game Trailers uh, Twitter handle. Um, you can also find us on Facebook, and of course on GameTrailers.com if you're finding this on uh, some weirdo app that we have on Xbox or iOS or Android. And uh, like I said, we will be back in some form or fashion next week. So uh, please tune in for the future of game trailers. And thank you for watching, guys. See you next time. I love the Xbox.